friends back again with another video today we've got a part two of yesterday's upload yesterday i showed you how to go into premiere and create some kind of horror or dark vibe kind of effects for your videos whether it's a music video horror short film anything like that so i showed you how to color grade i showed you some transitions i showed you some basic compositing in that last video so since yesterday i showed you all the premiere stuff today i'm going to show you all the after effects stuff so we got some really cool effects i'm going to be showing you i'm going to be showing you how to create this kind of crazy distortion on any kind of picture or even on landscapes as well as i'm also going to show you how to do some more advanced 3d compositing with stuff like this and how to show you how to create a hand or any kind of object coming out of pictures using a similar technique that i'm about to show you right now so we have some footage here to work with that has no effects on it so we're going to go ahead and throw this in after effects so i'm going to right click this and replace this with an after effects composition okay so we have that all settled now we can go ahead and just track our footage so let's right click on our clip and then let's go up to track and stabilize and then just click track camera now you're going to see that this 3D camera tracker pops up and it's going to go ahead and do all the working for us. Okay guys, so the camera just went through, did the work. As you see up here on our effect controls, we have the 3D camera tracker. And if I actually scrub through here, you'll see that these points are going to move with us. Now all we need to do is select a point where we would like to track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to track in the middle of this picture here. So about, about right here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to click create solid and camera. So you see we have our track point, and if I scrub through, this is gonna stay on our target. Just So now what I'm gonna do is set up another layer which has our displacement map. And this displacement map is gonna be the effect that we use to create the distortion in the picture, as well as you can use this on a bunch of other stuff. It's actually a really cool thing to experiment with. So we can't actually do it in this composition because the effects won't work. So we're gonna have to create a new composition to do this. So let's go ahead and just go back to our project bin up here, and then let's just click this button down here, create new composition. And then let's right click in this composition and then just click new and then click like solid and then let's just make it a simple black solid like that now let's go up to our effects and presets and we're going to look up a checkerboard effect so just look up checkerboard and then apply that onto your black solid just like that and then let's come up to our effect controls and just bump that all the way up to 200 just so it looks something like this okay so now we're going to apply the same track that we did earlier onto this plane and then we're going to overlay them and apply some effects so if you're not catching my drift just follow along promise it's a lot easier than it sounds it's just a few more steps to get it to work together so what we're going to do is we're going to click this toggle switches and modes button until we have the option to actually click this box right here which is going to make this layer a 3d layer so let's click that so now this is in 3D space. If you open up transform, what you can do is you can change different options now to kind of move it in a 3D plane, just like that. Now what we're gonna do is let's go back into our original composition. So this one right here is the one with our tracking. And what we're gonna do is we're going to click on our 3D camera tracker. So this is the camera that we already tracked. We're gonna click control C to copy that. Then let's go back to our composition. And just to keep this, and just so you don't get confused, I'm just gonna name this um, distortion or distort. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste the camera into this composition. So I'm going to click control V like that. And you see we have our 3D camera tracker and you guys are going to notice that our checkerboard black solid actually sticks to the area that we already tracked, which is actually very useful. And if you guys want, if you want a reference, you can also copy and paste the track solid over. It's not a big deal, um, but if you do want that, it can help because we're going to try and line these up best as we can. So let's just line this up real quick. Let's click on our black solid. And then let's change the orientation a little bit. I recommend you guys do do it if you want it to just look a little bit more smooth at the end. And then we can just hide this track saw layer once we've made that adjustment. Now let's come back into our link comp four. And what we're gonna do is come up to our project bin and we're gonna drag in the composition that we just made. So the composition we just made, I named distort. Uh, let's drag that into our timeline at the very top. And you're gonna see it's tracked onto our picture just the way we want it, which is looking good. Now in this stage, what you can do is you can adjust this so that, so if the checkerboard kind of falls off a little bit, what you can do is just go back into your composition and you can make any adjustments. You can even add a tiny little keyframe if you want it to just kind of stick over to the side a little more. So I'll just keyframe all of this and then whenever it gets too far, I'll just kind of move it back into the center like this. And then I'll do the same throughout. And like I said, this is optional. This is just to kind of keep it in the middle where we really want it. And you're gonna see our keyframe just went into effect. We can drag through here and you guys are gonna see what I'm talking about. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click down here in this kind of gray space and I'm gonna click new and I'm gonna click adjustment layer. 
Now on this adjustment layer, I'm going to go to my effects and presets library, and I'm just going to look up a displacement map effect. Now, if you guys haven't seen any of my displacement map effect tutorials or just aren't familiar with it in general, you can create some really cool distortion with this effect, as you see right here. Check out some of my other tutorials if you are interested in this. Um, it can affect different it can affect different elements of the video like colors, lightness, saturation, hue, luminance, alpha. What we're actually going to do is we're going to click displacement map layer. We're going to set that to be distort, which is the composition we made with the checkerboard. So now when we change this, it's only going to affect the area in the checkerboard, which is what we want. And as you see, it's, it's affecting the layer behind it. What I'm going to do is change the horizontal displacement to alpha, and I'm going to change the vertical displacement to luminance. And you can mess around with these settings in particular. You can mess around with these settings just to create whatever look you want. I'm also going to click wrap pixels around like this. Okay, so let's set these to zero for now while I show you guys how we can set this up to get the effect that we want. So what we're going to do is let's just open up the options for our distort composition and then let's open up transform and then let's just bump down opacity to 12 just like that. So it's just kind of a slight checkerboard. Now let's go back into our composition for distort and we're going to go ahead and just add some blurring onto this and you're going to see that this creates a much better looking effect. So let's just add a let's just add a fast box blur onto this. So let's drag it onto our black solid and then we'll just bump that up to something like 23, just adding some little blurring. And then let's go back and switch to our linked composition and then here's what you're getting now let's go and go now let's go back up to our adjustment layer with our displacement map let's say let's change something around and you're getting this crazy distortion look as you guys can see right here and if this is a little bit too off-putting like you can still see the checkerboard you can always just bump down the opacity or bump it up it always just depends on whatever footage you're using and notice that the displacement is only happening where the checkerboard is it's not happening to any other parts of this that's why we went through the trouble of creating that other composition so that we can have a selected area that we want to create this effect on so what I did to actually create that slight distortion that you guys saw at the beginning of that clip is I'm created a keyframe for my displacement so I'm just going to keyframe these two around the middle I'm gonna drag a bit and then I actually just bumped it up slightly I didn't want it to be too crazy if you guys want you can open up the options for your adjustment layer and then open up your effects and then you can actually physically just move the keyframe and adjust however you would like it to turn out but what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna click my switches and modes button again and I'm going to create my distort layer a 3d layer so it's, it's so it's a 3d layer in the composition but let's make the actual composition itself a 3d layer so let's click that and then I'm just gonna scale it up a bit and that's just gonna make the effect look a little bit more smooth as we go through here and then if you want you can also change any of the blending modes so you can change the mode to something like overlay in case you want to blend it a little bit better that's how I kind of got that just slight little rippling and if your checkerboard does get a little bit too visible what you can do is like I said you can either change around the opacity or you can go into the composition itself and you can just bump up the blur to something to something different. So I bumped it up to 56. Barely even see the checkerboard, but I'm still getting these kind of little ripples that I wanted before. Okay, you guys, so I showed you how to do that kind of specific part displacement map. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to combine what I just taught you, composite composite some things in and create this hand coming out of the picture as it seems. So to composite in that kind of cracking coming out of this area right here. What I did was I used a clip from footagecrate.com. So I talked about it in the first upload. This video is sponsored by footagecrate.com, link in the description. Like I said, this is a two part video. So if you wanna check them out, if you wanna check out how I use their stuff in the first part, make sure you check that out. I'm gonna be using another one of their 4K elements to composite in this kind of cracking. So you can just look up crack. And the one that I ended up using was, I'm pretty sure this one, Earthquake. So the actual clip itself looks like it's flat and this is a free clip also. So you don't even have to be a member to download this. Make sure you check Check it out link down in the description so go ahead and download that and then let's go back into after effects so let's go into our project and let's just find the clip that we downloaded so this is the one it's called footage earthquake and then let's drag that over to the area where we want to use it so here's what it looks like normally and like i said the cool thing about footage create is everything's already keyed out it's already a mov with a transparent background so it saves you a lot of time now that we need to do two things we need to composite it so that it looks like it's coming out of the picture and we need to actually apply the track so that it's in our 3d space now it's really easy to do this let's just toggle switches and modes and then let's make this a 3d layer so let's so let's click this button with the cube just like that and you're gonna see it's already tracked in 3D space. All we need to do is just move it over here. It's pretty well tracked as you guys can see. It's just matching the camera and it's kind of just stuck in 3D space. Now what we can do is open up these options, go over to transform, and then let's bump up the orientation to make it look to make it look like it's a little bit more vertical like that. So here's what we got as you guys can see. Looks pretty cool. 
Okay, so we got that cool cracking effect here without really having to do too much, which is super useful. Now let's get the hand coming out of there. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is just create another composition so that we can set this up. So let's go back to our project bin and then I'm just gonna click this button for a new composition. Make sure it's 1920 by 1080 and click OK. And I'm gonna drag in this image here. It's called hand.png. If you guys do want the download, I'll leave a link down in the description. And it's just a simple hand kind of looking like that. Not many motion, but we're gonna make some adjustments to make it look better. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to our effects and presets. We're just gonna add a black and white effect onto that. If you guys want, you can always change around the contrast and just color grade it if you do want to. We're also gonna add another super important step. We're gonna add a drop shadow onto this. So let's add our drop shadow. And then let's just increase the drop shadow distance like that. So let's go back to our original composition with all our tracking and stuff like that. Let's go into our project and just drag in and just drag in our composition that has our hand. And I'll make sure that's named hand so you guys don't get confused. So I'll just control shift D and then I'll just delete this part that we don't need. And I'm also going to make this hand clip a 3D layer as well. So let's show switches and modes. Let's make that a 3D layer. And then we'll reposition that so that it's tracked. You're going to see it's tracked on the wall just how we want it, which is looking good. And we can actually drag a little bit of that back because some of that kind of got cut off. So here's what we got, just the hand coming out. Now what, we're, now what I'm going to do is just scale it down a little bit because it's a little bit too big. So let's go to our transform. Let's go to the beginning. And then we'll just bump down the scale of that. You can also create a keyframe. And then we'll just go a little bit and we'll just make that a bit bigger like that. Things first, I'm going to go back to my hand composition right here. And I'm going to add that same box blur that I added onto our original stuff to add just the kind of ripples in the picture. So I'll go ahead and add fast block. So I'll go ahead and add fast box blur onto this. And then I'll just bump up the blur radius to around 13. Let's go back to our composition. That's what we got. That's what we're working with right now. And then I'm going to bump down our opacity to around 56. And I'm actually gonna reduce some of that blur because it is a bit too blurry. So I'll bump it down to maybe like 10. Let's go back to our layers, see what that looks like. Okay, so now I'm gonna create a whole new adjustment layer just to not get confused. So new adjustment layer and then place it over my hand. And I'm gonna make sure it's only in the area where my hand is. So I'll just cut this end part off, Control Shift D and I'll delete that. And I'm going to rename that hand distort. All right, so now we have an adjustment layer just to add some displacement over our hand, which is coming in here. So let's click on hand distortion, our adjustment layer. Let's go and add a displacement map on there like this. So we're going to add a displacement map on that. And we're going to select this displacement map layer. We're going to select hand two, which is the layer that has our hand. So now we're going to add dis So now we're going to be adding a displacement map only in the area that the hand is. So I'll show you. I'll bump it and the only area being affected is the area that has the hand in there. That's how you can kind of create that effect where it looks like the where it looks like the hands coming out and everything's just really blended well with the hands. So I'll switch this to alpha and then we can switch this to luminance where you can mess around with the settings. Now we can go ahead and just keyframe any kind of uh, displacement map coming just so we can kind of bump this up just so that we can create the effect that everything's being blended in with this hand. And then once you've done that, let's go back to our hand layer and then let's just adjust the opacity to blend that in all together. The thing that really pulls this effect off, adding that drop shadow as well as the displacement map in that area, distorting whatever's in the image. So in this example, the flowers are being stretched from that displacement map only in the area of the hand, making it look like it's really coming out of the picture. And that's about it guys, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You don't have to use just a hand coming out, you can actually go back to your composition, use any kind of image, experiment with this, you can create some really cool stuff with this technique. Hope you guys enjoyed this, like I said, if you are new here, consider subscribing, join the community, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, it helps the growth of this channel a huge amount. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later.